Right, so welcome to part two of this camera matching tutorial. So, obviously there was part one where we've partly matched the camera, and here's the Maya scene. This is pretty much where we got to. So, what we were doing is that we were actually uh, filming a shot a little bit like this one just here. So, we've got, here's our original static camera, so it wasn't a moving camera. So we recorded a baseline here, so this tape measure here is my baseline, that was 149 centimetres, and then we measured from each end of this to where the camera was, we measured the camera height, tilt angle, and a few things like that. So that's what we actually measured, and we were working in building this scene with this kind of data sheet. So here is my baseline, 149 centimetres, we had measured from here to the camera position, I think that was 245 jotted that down elsewhere and from this end to the camera which was I think about 332 centimeters camera height there and we've got tilt angles and so on as well so that's the sort of information we were kind of having in the background right so in Maya here then we've actually got this kind of uh, sort of setup so we've got our match camera here with the focal sensor size and so on all input uh, that's got an image plane in here which has got the actual sequence the uh, JPEG undistorted image sequence assigned to it it's using the correct frame numbers so as we scrub along the timeline here that will update with the right background image and then we've got a baseline distance measure tool from the origin so that's 149 centimeters with a locator at each end and then we've got these other measure tools which are from the baseline to where the camera should be so one for the left edge uh, left edge of the triangle one for the right edge of the triangle and they're the right distances that we measured on set and then we created a little rig so each of these distance measure tools has a locator at each end appropriately named so there's one that's on the left edge of the baseline and there's the one at the other end of that LX of 245 centimeters away from that point and the same for the right one and then what we actually did was parented the bottom one of those to the top so that when we kind of rotate we can actually rotate around in my space and move that locator so we actually moved the uh, top and right top locators until they kind of overlapped in Myers space so that we know that that must be where the camera was yeah because that triangle is unique so we've kind of created um, that kind of position there so that was great and then we moved the camera to the endpoint there so if we select either of those LX or RX distance measure tools and we actually look in the attribute editor that endpoint is showing the XYZ position of that end locator so we can just take those measurements and plug those directly into our camera except y obviously because camera height uh, we've measured separately so really just the x and z values that we need to put in so just plug those in let's move the camera to that position so the camera is in roughly the right position so what we want to do now is, is obviously it's not pointing in the right direction because obviously the baseline is there and my camera was obviously pointing more over there so what I'm going to do is make a sort of proxy object in Maya here to help us line this up. So I'm just going to kind of sort of drag on the grid a little bit, roughly get this right in position and just drag up a little bit. Yeah, we'll resize this manually. So there it is. So there's this baseline. So I want to go and select that object, go into my polycube and make it the right size. So I want it to be the same length as the baseline, which I've measured to be 149 centimeters for this camera. Obviously, if you had a different set, different measurement, you'd put that in. And then the height and depth, they're just kind of arbitrary values. I just want it big enough so I can see it in the viewport, but not very big. So I'm working to real world scale, so that is five centimeters. So that's fine. And I just want to move it then into position. I could do that manually, but I'm going to do that uh, here. So I'm going to set translate Z to be zero. Um, translate X, well the pivot of this new object is halfway along the actual object and the object's 149 centimeters. So I want to move it to be exactly over these two baseline locators. So I want to move the object halfway along the baseline in X basically. So 149 divided by 2, which if my maths is correct, is 74 and a half. So I'm going to plug that value in there. So that's sitting in the right position. And then the translate Y, 
Well, by default, this object gets created sort of halfway above and halfway below Maya's ground plane, so it's five centimeters high. So if I want to move it up so that it's sitting on the ground, I'm going to move it up two and a half units in Y. Yep. So it should then look like it's actually sitting on the ground. Yep. So if I zoom in here, that's good. Looks like it's sitting on Maya's ground plane, which is what I want. Great. Okay. So I'm then into a position to start matching this camera a little bit more carefully. So I'm just going to do an increment and save. It's worth doing lots of those when you're doing this. Um, so that you've always got something to go back to. So let's let's actually do this. So I'm going to um, maybe just tear off a copy of the window. When you're doing this, sometimes it's handy to have your perspective view and actually a copy of your kind of main camera view. So what I'm going to do is maybe look through my render camera here and then just tear off a copy of that. So there it is. So it tears off a copy of the window you've currently got visible. So then in the back here I can just go back to my perspective view. So then I've got the two. So I can always be looking through my camera but also manipulating my perspective view here. So that's great. So what I'm going to do is just select my camera and going to rotate. Now I know that my my pan angle is clearly wrong because this camera should be pointing more over towards this baseline. So I'm just going to roughly move this around until I can start seeing this. Ah, oh, look, there's my object coming in. That's fantastic. Right. Now, ideally, what would happen now, and like me, it almost certainly won't actually happen now, is that this object should just come in and be in exactly the right position. Yeah. It should just come in and sit perfectly along that baseline. Now it probably won't because the measurements probably weren't absolutely precise. And unfortunately that's difficult to measure within a couple of centimetres. Once we start fiddling with this we'll see that even a couple of centimetres makes this scene look quite different. So that's pretty close though. Now what I'm also going to do now is I know this isn't quite the right position so, but I don't know what was wrong. I don't know whether I measured um, the height wrong, whether I measured one of the ends of the triangle wrong, whether the baseline was wrong. So I've got a few of my camera attributes locked just to prevent me from measure, uh, changing them. But I'm actually at the moment, I'm going to unlock them because I don't want to constrain the movements I'm about to make too much so that um, you know, I can't move it in certain directions. So I'm just going to increment and save there. Lovely. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to line up one point of this object with something in this image so that they actually line up correctly. Now it's tempting to move the object to get that to happen, but the object, I want to be sitting here along this point in space. It's going to be easier to model the rest of the scene if one end of my baseline is on the origin. So I don't want to move the object. I don't want to scale the object, definitely. So all I'm going to be doing from now on is moving or rotating the camera. I don't want to do anything else apart from that. So the easiest way to do it is to use the Alt and Middle mouse button in this camera view here. And what that's going to do, if I hold down the Alt key and Middle mouse, I'm actually moving the camera. You can sort of see the camera moving probably in the viewport behind me a little there. Yep. So I'm going to move the camera until I get one point actually lined up on my background image. I'm not worried about whether the object looks too long or too short at this stage or whether the rotation of the object looks a bit wrong, which it does at the moment, but I'm just going to get one point lined up. Something like this. Okay, so this object here is kind of looking like this point here at least is lined up roughly where it should be. Yep. So that's fine for now. I'm just going to do another increment and save. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another rig a bit like we had earlier for these LX top and bottom. And I want to do that for the camera. So that the camera if I create a locator at this now point that I've lined up here on the end here, so if I create a locator and I rotate the locator, 
if I parent the camera to it, the camera will actually spin around a circle around that point. So this will let me to get this rotation of this object looking better. Um, what I'll be doing is, of course, not moving the object, but I'll be moving the camera, but it will make it look better in the camera viewport, because I don't want to rotate the object. Right, so let's just create a new locator. So I'm going to create a new locator. Okay. And that's going to come in here, and I'm going to call this Camera Rig. Fantastic. I'm just going to rename this baseline object here as well, because P cube one is not that great. Baseline ref object, that'll do. Um, okay, so this locator, now I need, do need to be a little bit careful with this. This is a very tiny locator. Look, there it is. It's very, very tiny. I'm probably going to want it a big, bit bigger, but there is a little bit of um, a, a gotcha with this. So if I just move the thing out of the way here. One way of doing that, of course, is to go into the scale for this uh, camera rig thing here. And just say, right, OK, let's make this a bit bigger. Let's make that 30 in each. Great, so there it is. It looks much bigger. So if I now, I just have a quick look at my camera. If you look at my camera here, my camera scale is 1. But if I now take my camera and I parent it to that camera rig, so I just select the two, and then I hit P, or go to Edit Parent, does the same thing. Bang, there we go. Oh dear, my camera scale is now completely changed. Now this can be a bit of a problem in terms of sensitivity when you're moving things in the camera viewport and things like that. So I don't advise you actually do that, tempting though it is. So I'm actually going to undo these changes I've made because I don't want to do that parenting and I don't want to do that to that and I'm going to go back to my camera rig and I'm going to undo that. So when I change the scale of this it's really important I change the locator scale, the local scale, otherwise it will change the scale of the camera when I parent it to it. So I don't want to change those scale values there. I can change these scale values or, identically, I can go into the attribute editor, it does the same thing, and change these local scale attributes for the locator. So if I go into there and change the local scale, hey ho, the visual effect is identical, so that's fine. It looks bigger in the viewport and I can see it. But if I now take my camera and select that camera rig and parent them again, if I look at my camera, I should find that my camera scale is still 1, which is what I want it to be. So, top tip there then, just change the local scale of your locator. Right, so we've done that and we've got our locator set up. So now, if I select my locator and rotate, I can choose which view works best. Um, it might be my perspective view or I might prefer my actual camera view. I'm going to work in my camera view here for a bit. So I can then spin this around until I like the look of it better. Yep. So that's maybe looking a little bit better there. It's also slightly tempting when you're looking at these objects to imagine that you know this this kind of 3D uh, end of this baseline is going to get obscured by this wall. So if it's reality, this this would actually be slightly behind the end of the wall here. Just remember, though, of course, in Maya this 3D object is closer to the camera than this 2D image plane, so this object, the whole of it, is always going to be in front of anything in that 2D image plane. So it's a slightly artificial um, impression we're getting here compared to what the real world would have been. So that's fine, and obviously if you wanted to kind of move things a little, you could do your alt middle mouse button and kind of still be, you know, moving things around uh, until you were happy. Yep to get that point lined up. So I'm now reasonably happy with my rotate, maybe not completely, um, but my scale is obviously wrong. My camera is obviously too far away from this object, so I need to move my camera closer so that it looks bigger. Again, I don't want to scale the object. So if I use the Alt and Right mouse button here in this viewport, as I drag the mouse, you can see I'm making that object smaller or larger because I'm moving the camera. So just move the camera around. Now of course it will pull off that end point again and we're going to have to move it back. So there's a bit of toing and froing once you get to this point. Just move it till it starts to look a bit closer. 
and then you can do your alt middle mouse button drag and start positioning it back into place yep. and then again if it's still looking wrong you can always adjust it a little bit more yep. go back into here move it back into position so this is now starting to look fairly decent you might go into wireframe view so you can either press 4 or uh, obviously go up here to wireframe shaded texture etc <coughs> and start looking at lining up these points here and see how it's actually looking now that's actually not looking too bad that locator seems to be pretty much on there yep and the scale is kind of certainly getting there it may still be not quite right so again I can just pull this out a little bit if I think it's a bit too short I can move it back over here yep so that's looking pretty decent I think there in terms of my scale go back to my textured view so you want this sitting along this baseline yep that's where that object should be yep and obviously this will have moved my camera around from my measured positions yep so you can see your camera probably won't be in quite the same position as it was originally compared with that yeah, depending on where you've got it now this may still not be the final position of my camera because to be honest even with this in the view it's still a little bit tricky to tell how well it's lined up it's only when you really start building the rest of the scene that you get the kind of best impression for you know once I make a geometry for this wall here move this back wall here and here I'm no doubt going to see that this still needs tweaking from this position but this is um, pretty good for now I'm just going to increment and save it so there we go so that's kind of created a, a reference object we've got a locator that we created on the end there to help us get the the, the kind of angle of rotation a little bit about let us spin the camera around this this little camera rig we created and we've just sort of manually tweaked the camera into position so that's where I'm going to end for now so that's part two so the next stage probably would be to start creating some geometry for the rest of the scene so I'll make another video for that at some point as well okay but thanks for watching